let's start with that Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa and uh, the Dalai Lama were, were friends and that they agreed on almost everything. Another point that I want to make to get stuff started is, is that the Dalai Lama has since the Panchen Lama been in the direction of, and several years ago, he finally made the statement that he's not going to be reborn. Okay, what does that mean? It means that was a political statement because of the Chinese government, right? However, it also point, it may be pointing out that this whole sham that we have been playing for all of these 14 times, um, the jig is up. The Chinese government has called us on it, and it's time to put this one to bed. Okay, so now let's look at what's really possibly going on there. Imagine that a bunch of monks go tooling up into the Himalayas, looking for a kid that, they're, that they want so that they can tra uh, train him up being around monks and give him a really first-class education. If they walk up to the door of this lady and says, hey, lady, can we have your kid? We're going to take him down there to the temple and we're going to teach him all about the good stuff. And we want a young one this early enough so that we can teach him good because we don't trust the way you've been teaching him. You're making an idiot out of him. We want to make a Dalai Lama out of him. Okay, is she going to give him that kid? Not a chance. Oh, no, not a chance if they tell her the truth. So what they go up there with is a bag of goodies and give them all to the child to play with. And the one he picks up and plays with, oh, he used to play with that in the last life. Oh, lady, we've got a Dalai Lama here. Your child is so special. Oh, you, you would be the savior of the world, lady, if you give us your kid. And they'll get a kid that way. Mm -hmm. So that's the scam is to talk about all of this. And so they basically when they need a new Dalai Lama, they go down and get a kid and then they train him up in all of the good ways that they trained the Dalai Lama. Another one that they tried that with was um, Krishnamurti. Okay. And Krishnamurti rebelled against it in a way, but he rebelled more against Ledbetter than he did against all of the teachings because he wound up still being a marvelous Dhamma teacher anyway. Okay. So I would have liked to have had that myself rather than my daddy and my mommy that I had to deal with the way everybody else does. It would have been nice if I'd had 50 uh, Arahats giving me the education that I needed. Okay. So this is the way that I look at the Dalai Lama is, is that he has a first class education and he wears it well. He is noble-minded and he understands the Dhamma. And I've heard a lot of his talks. And I also know that he can talk the way that the Buddha did on both sides of his mouth. In other words, when you have people who come and give you questions that require uh, answers in rebirth, he will give them answers in rebirth. If they come and ask him real logical questions, he'll answer those too. And that's very, very typical of the way that it's done. It's even done that way in the suttas, that that's how the Buddha got original uh, people to come is because they believed in all of that magical stuff. And so they needed to know that he knew what they believed in. That's why he was such an expert, or let us say, that's why he proved that he was an expert. He actually was skilled in that, schooled in it by a very good teacher when he was a child. So he was well-educated in the Rig Vedas and all of that kind of stuff. And he knew what he was talking about. And because of that, these people would gain confidence in him. And then they would go off like Sati and he'd beat the tar out of them. <laughs> when they kept their magical beliefs, oh no, it's time to give those magical beliefs up if you're actually going to make real progress.